high. Welcome. Thanks to my friend Paul at Dream Guitars for loaning me nine amazing guitars. This is actually my Olsen, but this is the only guitar of mine that I'll be playing tonight. The rest of them are on loan, and they are wonderful and different and have these great varied personalities. So I was finding the songs that fit with each of the guitars, at least in my imagination. So I'm going to um, start with a silly little short song about guitars. There's a guitar here in the window I'd like to play before it's sold Such a classic mint condition Great shape for one this old All these axes have their stories Of the gigs that they have seen But when this one sold the first time I was 17 Cause back then I didn't want it It was way too new for me I needed something old and righteous with its own authority. So the first guitar I ever bought was twice as old as me. Cause its life was full of music as I dreamed that mine might be. And I played that thing a thousand nights and traded it away for something slightly newer that was easier to play. But now lately I buy new guitars, shiny as a hearse. I still like the look of road wear, but the roles have been reversed. But now this thing is a classic, and I still don't need to buy. Yeah, the old ones have their stories, but by now, so do I. Nance and I were just out camping with friends. Social distancing, you know, but uh, they've also been very careful, and so they're kind of in our pod. And at night, on this very quiet lakeside campground, suddenly someone was playing a guitar. And he was good. And made me realize that, you know, before all this technology, if someone was playing music, you were paying attention because, you know, it was the only chance you were going to hear it. It was not on a playback anywhere. <laughs> and it was lovely hearing that and being reminded of that. There's nothing like new guitars, or different guitars anyway. This is not a new guitar. This guitar is a, um, it's a Schoenberg. And um, this is from 1994, which is probably the time that T.J. Thompson was building Eric Schoenberg guitars. And... TJ was kind enough to give me a tour, and he's the first one who showed me tone woods uh, and the difference in the sound. When you just tap a thin piece of wood, it has life in it. And uh, so um, Eric Schoenberg uh, has this amazing guitar, which I got to play. It is a 1929 not this one, <laughs> the 1929 OM45, belonging to Eric Schoenberg, is the most fantastic guitar I've ever played. And it's worth more than my house, of course. From 1929, that Adirondack spruce was so perfectly grown. Those trees just don't grow like that anymore. And uh, they were on to something. And as you'll see when we go through all these different builders, some people 
try to uh, come back to the authority of what worked before. And some people say, I don't know, what's a guitar? What's it for? What, what could it be? And uh, I love all the different uh, ways of coming at this and all the different uh, luthiers, fascinating people. When you get so inside something, uh, a discipline like that. But um, I want to play this song because it's kind of a song about being a little disoriented in these times. Circus boy, runaway, steely-eyed gypsy Seems to be adjusted to the clatter of the fairy he says, watch your step as it tears two tickets briskly Watch as your summer legs climb the stairs Follow on, tip right in, latch the bar, lean to Feel the smooth touch of the summer skin When it all starts moving like no one else can see you Cupid pulls the lever and the whole thing spins You had a shiny ride getting out of here We never heard a word, you just disappeared Across thin air and leaves you there. Try to catch your breath, but the bar is tied against your chest, and the ride is spinning so hard it holds you in your chair. Spin. You had a shiny ride getting out of here. We never heard a word, you just disappeared. Shiny ride with those lies again it just leads you on pulls you in took you for a spin when it lets you out you find it's many months later deep into winter in a small tiny town Walking kind of aimlessly One hand on a railing I stop a while to wait Until the spinning slows down You had a shiny ride Getting out of here We had No idea where you went You just disappeared Into that shiny ride Lies again, leads you on, and pulls you in. It took you for a spin. He said, Come on, a ride on a shiny new love. No love behind you, step right up. So if you're Eric Schoenberg, of course, you know how good that O.M. Martin sound can be. Because you've got the 1929 O.M. 45. And it's the high frequency on that guitar that is so amazing. I mean, low notes, I like them. They're good for my heart. But on that guitar, you play a really high note, like way up, you know, and, and it has a whole arc, it has a beginning, it has a middle, it has an end, it has an authority, it has a depth. Um, 
that's hard to do. And, uh, and so um, some people really say, you know, you got to just follow that tradition. Tradition. This guy doesn't. And he's a fascinating builder. Uh, this is a Dion guitar. This is easily the loudest guitar of any of the 10 that I will play tonight. And it's punchy and it's got attitude. And uh, when I was thinking about like, okay, so what song for this guitar? Um, Dion guitars are made by Dion James in Edmonton, Alberta. And uh, it's a fascinating guitar. In some ways, it's very sort of plain, as if to say it's not about the decoration. He makes all his guitars out of sustainable woods, no rainforest woods. Um, and <laughs> the brake angle, the, the saddle is so high, and the brake angle is boink, straight up. And it just gives the strings leverage on the guitar. It's torquing it harder than most guitars. It's an interesting compromise on guitars about like, do you want to make it last? Like a couple lifetimes? That's dangerous because they don't really sound good until they're 50 years old. I'm already way too old to buy one of those guitars. <laughs> I want a guitar to sound good right now. And this is like a hot rod guitar. This is a guitar that is really like aware of the, the choices you're making about like, this may not last a hundred years, but it's gonna sound fantastic for 60, you know? And that's all we need. <laughs> I kind of like that guitars are not like violins. Violins can be hundreds of years old and great. Guitars will pull themselves apart. And, uh, uh, you know, unless they have that little tail piece where the, where the strings run all the way to the back. But there's just torque. There's just forces on this. So, this song. I had to play a song about someone feisty. And this is a custom song that I wrote for someone who was 90 some years old and she was in a lot of pain and she decided she was gonna, you know, invite all the family and make sure that everyone could make it to see her off. That's legal in California. So, uh, she did that. And she, she had this song for that moment for everyone gathered around. And my favorite line in the song is, trust me. You know, and when I learned about her life, she was a wild thing. So, this is a song about all that. Of course it had to be like a 1940s swing tune. She was a wild thing. It's been a time we had some laughs. Really, I just can't stay. Dinner with wine, dressed up so fine. We saw a lovely play. The curtain is slowly closing. I will turn on my heels and wave. It's been a time, really, I just can't stay. I'm sleepy. It's been a day and most of the night Cobblestones wet with rain All of the lights shine on the water I should be on my way Back across the moonlit river Crossing that bridge alone Why stay around? All of my friends are gone. I'm leaving. I've had my 
share of fun It's been a time but I know my time is done Believe me It's been a life clear to the end I had to find my way The pain and the strife Lovers and friendships We had a fine soiree Now is the time to say goodbye Trust me that I'm okay It's been a time but really I just can't stay No way It's been a time but really I just can't stay So punchy and uh, and kind of uh, bold and um, uh, you know that guitar you wouldn't play uh, like a song that's sort of uh, sort of dreamy and wistful and want to make you weep. At least I wouldn't. Uh, but this guitar, oh my God. fascinating how different they are, right? One of my favorite things is being a matchmaker. Paul does that with me when I go visit. He, uh, he puts a guitar in my lap. He says, I think you might like this one. The only thing I do as a matchmaker is help people find the right motorcycle. Because like guitars, motorcycles have very different personalities, and some are tradition. Some are basically, you know, 1940s technology, chug, chug, chug. And some are made to look really fast, and some are made to feel like you're going fast, and some are actually made to go fast. And it depends what you want. Some last forever with no maintenance. Some require a devoted relationship. You have to know how to adjust the valves if you're going to buy a Ducati. But um, this is a Klein guitar. And uh, Steve Klein has been making guitars for 50 years in Sonoma, California. This is a song that's wondering about what it is in the sound that really brings the songs out of your soul. Because you can have all the right woods, you can have all the right materials, and the guitar just sometimes doesn't do it. <laughs> The style or the subject or the painter's heart The smile of a woman who was sly and smart Or a story that we've never known And what makes the taste in a worthy wine The name on the label or the roots of the vine In the warmth of the sun in the summertime In the vineyard where the grapes are grown It's the soul It's the soul of it I can't take hold of it We don't know And what makes the measure in a stand of trees Is it the land or the lumber or the smell of the breeze 
or the quiet sway that put your mind at ease when you needed a place to go? And what kind of lifetime brings us here to commemorate a singer we've known for years? And what brings joy in the midst of tears when the memories start to flow? It's the soul of it. It's the soul of it. We can't take hold of it. We don't know. pictures from our 20,000 days the rushing disappears without a whisper the timelessness remains it's the soul of it it's the soul of it We can't take hold of it We don't know Steve Klein built that. Well, actually, Steve Kaufman built that. Steve Klein designed it. There's lots of different kind of sizes of Klein guitars. Oh, this is my favorite song of the night. It's a song that I've been working on for 10 years, maybe. <laughs> and uh, I should tell you just a little about my... Olsen guitar. This Olsen guitar has a rosewood neck. Now, a rosewood neck uh, is kind of heavy, but the grain on this goes this direction, you know? So it's not like those guitars where the, the grain is going like this and the, and the neck pops off when it falls over. This, the grain is going this way. It's amazingly strong. And, um, of course, it has those laminate maple strips in there and everything, but there's stuff about this guitar I just love. It's so versatile, and, you know, you can put the capo anywhere and it stays in tune, you know. You know, it's just amazing. Let's put it on the 11th fret. <laughs> Most guitars, you put a capo anywhere and you're going to have to retune the B string and the low E string. But uh, it's a technical fix. So this is the reason why it's my favorite song is because it does me the most good in terms of the rest of my life. Uh, it's a song about... Uh, a spiritual practice, but doesn't mention it by name. It just walks you through the process of, you know, like I'm feeling something that I makes me feel kind of, ugh, and I, I kind of want to avoid that feeling. So I can't get out of that confine of that emotion. The door opens in. In other words, I can push really hard 
on that emotion as if saying, get away from me. <laughs> I can't get out of it. If I welcome it into my heart, of course, you know, then this wonderful metamorphosis happens and it gets sort of changed into energy and vision and compassion and life, you know? <laughs> But this song has a sense of humor because it's sort of like that Far Side cartoon, you know, where the guy is pushing really hard on a door that says, pull. <laughs> so I just went with that image. <sighs> if I just put I can on some big door that opens in to fight that fight it always leaves me right where I feel wrong that rusty pain that prison steel the ancient shame My great escape could never free me Though I pushed so hard, so long Cause where my heart had been The way out opens in And I pushed that pain away so long But now it's gone, gone, gone And still that gate It would not unlatch I never knew It should be easy It's a weakness To be strong These memory ghosts Out in that dark I ask them close Into my heart when they came, they came to teach me what I've missed my whole life long. Where my heart had been, the way out opens in, and I pushed that pain away so long. But now it's gone, gone, gone. had been a place to hide from my own heart inside my pride pain broke in to try and reach me get me back where I belong what kept me trapped behind that door was just old pain I'd felt before so I brought it in and it released me now it's gone 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 cause where my heart had been the way out opens in and I'd pushed that pain away so long now it's gone, gone, gone Gone, gone, gone mm. It doesn't mean that, you know, like, you never feel pain anymore. It just means that whenever you're feeling pain, it's the way back to the beauty, which is so counterintuitive. <laughs> So I can understand why we keep thinking all I need to do is get rid of this pain. <clears throat> now this guitar, oh my God. Speaking of uh, 
Speaking of bliss and wonder and what makes me sort of healed and whole, um, I'm going to tell you a little story. Um, this is another sort of spiritual practice, although it's very mechanical. <laughs> I lift the bike down from the hook and set the wheels on the concrete inside the garage. Just dropping the bike an inch, I can tell the tire pressure's great. The tone of the bounce. Ah, oh, this bike is so light. The titanium frame. It's just a work of art. So I walk the bike out of the garage and you can hear the clip, clop, clip, clop from the cleats on the bottom of the cycling shoes as they click on the concrete. At the same time, I hear the tick, 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 tick of the freewheel ratchet. I walk out of the garage and into the sun. I swing a leg over. I click that cleat into the pedal, and I hear it click home and lock. And then I'm rolling. And I click the other pedal in, and then I'm home. I'm back. I'm in the lineup. What I mean by the lineup is that I see the world from a particular point of view that I have always loved. I have seen a lot of the world from this very point of view, and it all comes back to me as soon as I'm here again. It changes my thinking. Just looking at my two hands on the hoods of the brake levers, I look down past the handlebar to the hub that's turning, and below that there's the point of contact where the wheel is touching the ground. And of course, at the place where the wheel touches the ground, that part of the wheel is not moving compared to the ground. It's one with the pavement. And of course, the top of the wheel is going twice as fast as I am, but halfway in between, right there in the middle, the hub that hangs from the spokes suspends the fork that connects the frame that holds all of this together. It's what I think about. Yes, I'm, I'm reinventing the wheel. Why not? The wheel has reinvented me. I've been changed by this beautiful, efficient mechanism of transformation. I have traveled all over Europe, Italy, Spain, Portugal, the UK. I've traveled from the San Juan Islands off the coast of Washington State and down to Florida, I have traveled the whole length of the Blue Ridge Parkway and the Skyline Drive and up into Vermont and New Hampshire and Maine and Nova Scotia. I've traveled corner to corner, ocean to ocean, all the way to California, and I feel all those places when I click back in. It's, it's not just what I see. It's a way of seeing. I snap back into that rhythm of the long uphill when I have that breath, you know, the... You know, three strokes in, two strokes out. The breath, the steady rhythm that gets all that oxygen in my, my blood and that oxygen in my brain. And that's part of what I mean by the lineup. That's part of the long uphill, but there's more. There's also the angle that my gaze meets the road. My gaze rides the road about 20 feet in front of me. I'm just looking for any sparkle of glass, looking for any stick or crack to avoid. And when my gaze is riding the road at that angle, something seems to get sharpened. It's sort of like what the wizard told me. I met this wizard at the Santa Cruz farmer's market. You know, I'd been riding, and when you're on a long ride, you can eat anything. The metabolism is really going. So I stopped at the farmer's market. And yes, I had the smoothie. And yes, it was awesome. California. And then I had the savory crepe with a little sriracha. Then I had that little paper cup of the sipping chocolate. Just the sample size. But it was so rich with that cayenne kick. It was delectable. And I sipped it slowly as I looked around the whole farmer's market. And the first thing I saw of the wizard was his Volkswagen bus. It was a 1969. It was parked right behind his little canopy tent there at the farmer's market. It was his sharpening booth. He had this German-made knife sharpening wheel that turned steady, slowly. You clamp the blade into the jig and you bring the blade down onto the stone wheel. Anyone who really knows how to hone things knows it's all about the angle. 
and I talked with the wizard about the lessons of sharpening. Anyone who's really deep into something, they get mystical. He was talking about the consistent angle, because that wheel turns so slow and steady, and the knife blade actually goes edge first toward the oncoming ribbon of road. Did I say road? Yeah. That circular stone turns toward the blade as if the blade is trying to shave the stone. But of course, as the stone is shaved, the blade is honed. And the wizard can tell by the feel in the blade. He can tell by the sound. He can tell when the right amount of metal is ground down, when the cutting edge is now present on the surface. What the wizard knows is the benefits of that steady angle. I smile. I know. I've seen a lot of the world from this certain point of view, this certain angle. The wheel of the horizon line does have that curve, doesn't it? I meet the wheel at ground level, my gaze at that 20 feet in front of me angle. It's a method of honing the way I see. The wizard was talking about his beautiful German-made wheel with the jig on it that holds the blade at the precise angle. Yes, and the angle of my gaze. As my eyes ride the road 20 feet in front of me, it's much the same. It's the cutting edge of the present moment, the cutting edge of now that is resting on that ribbon of road that is moving toward me, blurring under me, this turning wheel, this dangerous surface that hones my consciousness by cutting away the dullness. When I'm in the lineup, I see between my hands the handlebar, the hub, the point of contact, the wheel that's turning, yes, but it's all one big, blue, beautiful wheel that's turning. And yes, the whole arc of my story feels blissful. It's all connected. It's not just the blood going through my brain. It's the familiar frame that aligns me. It hones the edge. So when the wizard talked about how to hone away the dullness, I said, yes, I understood. I spend a lot of time looking at this big wheel, looking at the arc of my life. And it does sharpen me. So I said, thank you. I meant it. I know that this sipping chocolate's going to get me up the next hill, so I say goodbye to the wizard and... I walk my bike out of the Santa Cruz Farmer's Market. Clip, clop, clip, clop. I get to the edge of the road. I swing a leg over. I hear the cleat lock in the pedal with a click, and, and I'm back. I'm in that same place. I'm at home in the world, looking through the lineup, my gaze in front, riding the road, coming toward me. I find a gear that suits the slope, and as I turn the pedals, I spin this big, beautiful blue wheel under me, honing away the darkness, honing away the dullness, sharpening how I see. This guitar is also made in Germany. This guitar... <laughs> This guitar is made by Max Spawn. I heard him pronounce it, and he pronounced it Spawn. Is that right? Spawn? Max Spawn is from Germany, and he's a young builder, and he's trying things differently. This guitar, it's so interesting looking. It has just, uh, you know, instead of having a rosette that goes around the circle, why not put a rosette like there, at the angle that you play it. I don't know, no one's ever done it. Let's try, see what happens. But the tone of this guitar. So this song is in, in contrast to that last story. This is a song that um, was a co-write with me and David Lamott. He sent me this idea and it was so beautiful about how easy it is for us to not pay attention in the present moment, but to kind of disappear in our distractions. 
I must explain about this trick I do I tend to disappear You ask if I can just be present with you Next moment I'm not here It's so easy to slip into a bottle Or fall into a cellular phone Tap the glass just like magic Suddenly you know you're alone Like a magician with a black top hat You've seen this trick before Gone like a rabbit when we talk like that When you ask for more I don't know how to be inside my body And face the things I don't want to feel Tap the hat, gone like magic Anytime it's getting too real When I was young I used to tour this show I had the pattern down I'd ask a volunteer I did not know I'd say, trust me, I'd skip town I got so good at the disappearing magic The showmanship was deep in my bones Hide my heart, years of practice Now I'm disappearing at home when I get cornered, I can give you the slip, but I don't go out the door. You've never seen a disappearance like this, except all those times before. It's so easy to slip into a bottle or fall into a cellular phone. Tip the glass Just like magic Suddenly you know you're alone I can go out like a candle flame Drift away like sand I show up different but I look the same I'm the disappearing man Disappearing an old song that I so love. I've been kind of doing the, um, the how I get caught and how I get free, and this is another how I get free song. Uh, I, I just write the songs that I need to hear, you know. I'm not trying to, like, preach. I'm just trying to <laughs> uh, feel as good in my life as I feel when I'm playing guitar. <laughs> If it weren't for guitar, I wouldn't know how good life could feel. Um, but uh, when my heart is kind of cracked open, this is a song about how hearts don't even work right until they're broken, broken open. This is a Thompson guitar. It's not T.J. Thompson that built the uh, Schoenberg guitar. This is uh, Preston Thompson, not in Sisters, Oregon. Actually, Preston died last year, but he has left behind a, a great team of builders that are carrying on. And as you can tell, he's got some Martin influence. shape.
ocean A concrete sky And a stone cold sea I came to where the emptiness Cracked open And all my fears Came crashing through And met the fire of my sorrow But I found my strength In forgiving you I never even dreamed how far my heart could go to give my life beyond each death from this deeper well of trust to know that when there's Nothing left You will always have What you gave to love The love you give becomes your only lasting treasure. And what you lose will be what you win. A well that echoes down too deep to measure. A silver coin rings down that well You could never spend too much A diamond echoes deeper still And you'll always have what you Always have what you gave to love. It's two. <laughs> Regular tuning. This is a Larry Brown guitar. He lives in Asheville, North Carolina. He makes lots of different kinds of instruments, like fiddles and violas and all kinds of stuff. Uh, he made lots and lots of lutes. And uh, this obviously has Martin influence as well, uh, that beautiful old kind of narrow bridge. But this guitar has some fantastic modern stuff. Like if you look along underneath here, you realize the top of this fretboard is not glued to the top. It has space to move. The neck is adjustable. Like normally after a guitar gets old and the top starts to pull a little that you either have to shave the saddle down 
too low so you don't get enough break angle, or you have to reset the neck. And, you know, on, a, on most guitars, that's a big operation, uh, ungluing something that nobody ever planned to be unglued. <laughs> and uh, so um, this guitar, it's a turn of a screw. It's... But I'm going to play um, a song that is old and new. Um, actually, this is a poem, and it's, it's a young man's poem. Um, but it's old. And it's a poem that normally is not done to music, but I'm imagining it like a Guy Clark kind of a poem. And so... Um, I'll tell you afterwards who wrote the poem. But for now, let's just imagine that it's about that time when you're kind of, you know, mid-twenties, maybe late-twenties. And you get together with some old friends. And you realize you guys aren't going to be friends anymore. You were such good friends. That's kind of over. You've just changed in different ways. It's a beautiful way of talking about it, about how hard that is to talk about. This young man who wrote this poem, he went to college up in Maine. He's from Portland, Maine. He went to Bowdoin College. And, uh, so this is about when he gets back to Portland. He's talking to his friends. He sat within the farmhouse old, whose windows looking o'er the bay gave to the sea breeze damp and cold an easy entrance night and day. Not far away we saw the port, the strange old-fashioned silent town, the lighthouse, the dismantled fort, the wooden houses quaint and brown. We sat and talked as light descending filled the little room. Our faces faded from our sight, only voices broke the gloom. We spoke of many a vanished scene, of what we once had thought and said, of what had been and might have been, and who was changed and who was dead. And all that fills the hearts of friends when first they feel with secret pain, their lives thenceforth have separate ends and never can be one again. That first slight swerving of the heart that words are powerless to express and leave it still unsaid in part or say too much in great excess. The very tones in which we spake had something strange I could but mark. The leaves of memory seemed to make a mournful rustling in the dark. Oft died the words upon our lips As suddenly from out the fire The fire built of the wreck of stranded ships The flames would leap and then expire And as their splendor flashed and failed We thought of wrecks upon the main Of ships dismasted that were hailed but sent no answer back again. That kind of quiet, you know. The windows rattling in their frames, the ocean roaring up the beach, the gusty blast, the bickering flames, all mingled vaguely in our speech until they made themselves a part of fancies floating through the brain, the long-lost ventures of the heart that send no answers back again. Oh, flames that glowed, oh, hearts that yearned, they were indeed so much akin 
The driftwood fire without that burned The thoughts that burned and glowed within Henry published that in 1850 ago still kicks ass this song <laughs> this song is not about trying to recreate the past with friends who have grown apart this song is not about imagining a grand future that you're headed for this song is about trying to be in the moment. By the way, this is a Matsuda guitar. Michi Matsuda was born and raised in Japan. Now he lives in Oakland, California. At the place where this footpath comes down to the river, there's a swift flowing waterway, chilly and clear. I can wade if I'm careful, but the creek bed is slippery, and it taught me a lesson the last time I here I was facing this crossing like a challenge to conquer all I saw was an obstacle blocking my way and I rushed to get past it and that slate was so slippery that I fell in the current and got carried away take my time in this moment ripe with choice full of hope just before I step out on that slippery slope now I face this same river with a chance to start over and the water is swirling around where I stand but my goal is to balance and let go of frustration as if my destination is to be where I am take my time in this moment ripe with choice Before I step out on that slippery slope Now my map shows where I plan on camping But my next step is my one concern To put myself right where I'm standing Is the lesson I'm trying to learn Take my time in this moment, ripe with choice, full of hope. Just before I step out on that slippery slope, just before I step out on that and have a bite, come back, still ringing, you know.
<laughs> oh, man. But there are things we aspire to. So hard to just hang in the present moment, right? <laughs> um, oh, this song. This song is wise. At the end of the song, I, you hear that the entity that is speaking the words of the chorus is uh, a sense of history that's bigger than one human life. It's a sense of the current that we're all carried along in, like the arc of history bending towards justice. Mississippi River Where I woke up from my dream On the raft where we lay sleeping As the moonlight shone downstream There's a symphony of silence upon the breeze that whispers we need not rush this drift upon this river see how it knows the
But it can't resist the flow that whispers we need not rush this drift along this river See how it knows the frequency, you know. And this uh, carving on the, on the bridge is so intricate. It's really a beautiful guitar. <clears throat> That's probably the one I would buy if I, you know, had any money. <laughs> Speaking of having any money, the tip jar. It buys groceries. It's not enough to buy guitars, but, you know. I want to play you just the first verse from a song that is really inspiring to me. Um, it is a Scott Cook song. And, uh, and I just had to play this verse for you because it's all about guitars this uh, baritone guitar is a mountain song baritone it's made by Ken Jones he lives near Asheville this guitar came from a timber from the body of a tree through the workshop of a luthier now it's on loan to me And it's good company after dinner And it fits my hand just fine But someday another singer With a pair of hands like mine Will coax out songs much prettier Still hiding in the strings And sing stronger, braver words Than I could ever sing And folks are gonna love it this I'm almost sure So I'll take good care of it Cause I'm borrowing it from her Pass it along Pass it along May it land in careful hands When we're gone you Carry it for a moment Time won't loan it to you for long you don't own it, pass it along. The baritone guitar. <clears throat> it's what you do when you really need, you know, emotional healing. It'll get right down there like a good chiropractor, you know. Wow. 
Uh, I think I want to play you this one. Um, and I need to... This one, we're coming up to our hour 15 minute mark. <sighs> the way the bass notes mix together. This is that uh, Max Spawn guitar again. falling in love but really falling like out of a perfectly good airplane Winter comes and 
the sky is cold and gray. We'll keep the endless summer blue, and I will be in love with you. After I finish this concert, I'm going to go join the uh, the neighbors in our front yard watching a movie. <laughs> the outdoor movie night. Social distancing. It's really fun. Um, and it is a fascinating thing uh, that after I play music, um, I need to do something else right away. Uh, that's... Um, my, my heart gets so, I don't know, open is not bad, but this is a different kind of open. This is, uh, I, I can't explain it, <laughs> but I'm going to watch a movie and uh, I will come back and read all your comments. And thank you so much. It's really fun getting to sing for you. And it's really fun playing all these guitars. <laughs> I'm going to take them back to Paul tomorrow morning <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> They're worth way more than my house. <laughs> but uh, it's really fun. Um, <laughs> and I think if I were to buy one of them, I would buy this Max Spahn guitar. And the Ivanov, the Doncho Ivanov guitar. I need that one. And the Larry Brown guitar. So if I was going to buy one, I, I would just buy the, the, the Larry Brown the Ivanov, the Spahn, and the Dion, I need the Dion, and the Klein, and the Schoenberg, I guess I need that one too. <laughs> They've all got different songs in them, see? So, <laughs> it's so fun. And, and spending time with a guitar is a fascinating thing. You know, if you're in the shop, you strum, 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 you don't have time for the guitar to do the thing that it does, which is imprint some sort of spiritual transmission onto your heart. But like this guitar, I don't know what's going on. I, I still don't understand what it is that happens with me and guitar. But, you know, when I do this, I'm just not the same. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I'm going to shut this mess off.